There it is, Air 42. Seems to come and go, shuts off by itself. Hello, I'm Glenn Verner, and today I've got a uh, Bosch cooktop showing Air 42. Uh, and I understand if I can replace the capacitors in that, I should be able to fix that error 42. My other choice may be to just replace the controller. That's about a $400 part. So what I'm going to do is give this a try. Uh, swap out the capacitors on the unit. Uh, so, and see if it works. So, uh, let's get to it. Well, we want to make sure we've got the power turned off on the cooktop, so let's go to the uh, circuit breaker box and we'll turn off the cooktop. Well, now, now it should be safe. Uh, so here's the cooktop. Most of the time these cooktops will have some uh, something holding them down. Mine underneath doesn't have anything holding it down. Uh, I should be able to just pull it up off of the granite. Now in the back here we've got a wire uh, and there's a couple of tie downs on the wire. I've removed the screws. So now I'm see if I can uh, lift the unit out of there. I've done this before so I'm sure I can do it. Get it out and I'll turn it over. So we're going to take the cover off the unit, and this is held on by these screws along the edges. All these screws are all the same size, the only difference on the, the corners, we've got this rubber, they've got a rubber cover on the corner. So each corner has a little rubber bumper. This is a Torx head uh, screw, size a T20 for the branch. And they're all the same size screws, so you don't have to worry about it. Here I flipped the unit around to get a little better view, a little better lighting. Can you take the screws out? So now we got all the screws out. Let's see if we lift it up. Get a look at the, what's underneath. So here are the control boards underneath this cover. We're going to uh, take these screws out. And these screws again, I think these are all the same. Almost all the same size. Every screw is the same. I think there's only two. The only two that are different are in the, these two here that um, hold the plastic cover together. There's two of these. A little bit, little bit different. Uh, they're screwing into plastic instead of metal, so they have a different thread on them. So remember, they, these are going into the plastic, two plastic holes here. So now we have our cover off. We get our first look at our control board. And you may not be able to see this from this angle. Here are the capacitors that we're talking about, these two capacitors. You see the tops, they're both expanded out. They've so those, we know those capacitors are bad because the tops have expanded. Here's a closer shot of those two capacitors, and maybe you can uh, you can see the tops have expanded up. All these wires here, and I'd like I'd love to take this board out and put it on the bench. Uh, I'm thinking if I if I have to disconnect all these wires, I'm going to have to number them. So I'm uh, trying to decide the best way I want to go there. So I'm going to start with removing a few pieces uh, over here on. This left side, we've got a small ribbon cable, and we can work that out. That connects, there's two boards in here that connects the two of them together. And then this uh, tie down here, I'm going to snip this off. I get the whole unit out, but uh, there's two boards. There's one on the the top and one on the bottom. So I really want to get need to get to this area here. There's some hold downs in here. It seems like it's probably snapped in place. Let's push this little tab. 
tabs in, find them all, and uh, pull this board out. So the capacitors are right here, are here, these two places on this side. And it's probably going to be easier if I just work, leave it all connected. Got to pay attention to the plus and negative on the capacitors. These stripes are generally the negative side. So I might want to take a picture of that. We've got negative or negative on this one's on this side and negative on that one's on the other side. Okay, so I've clamped this in, uh, my board in place, got it kind of held down. So Clamped to 2x4, so I'm able to get a little more steady. Going to see if I can uh, get these uh, capacitors off. I'll try putting a little flux on the tip. See if I can get that solder started. These holes are clear. Somewhat clear right now, but still not quite clear enough to get the new get the new capacitor in. I'll try the vacuum pump a couple more times. Work on the other one, try to get the other one out. So now it's out of there. I'll try and clean the solder off. Seems to be a little trick there. See if I'm getting the hang of it. I'm not sure. They do have a couple holes there. And uh, they're both big enough for the capacitor leads. In fact, all four of them are good now. So uh, we can get the capacitors in there. Now I'm going to clean these with a little bit of a denatured alcohol. So both the original capacitors were 470 microfarms, I guess. I don't know if you can see that. They were both rated the same. And I'm replacing them with essentially the same thing. It was 470. But it is 35 volts. You can have a higher voltage. It's just the maximum the capacitor can work with before it blows up. 
So I'm going to put these into place, and we'll see if we can solder them back in. Remembering where the negative was. Let me put these back. these off. I want to bend them over a little bit. They don't fall out. Well, we'll see if we can solder these back on. Hopefully it'll be easier to get them off was. My tips back up to heat. Heat back up. Look better. Two lower ones look pretty good. This, these are questionable. I'm having trouble seeing them. Maybe I need to get a little more flux on there and heat it up again. I hate to get it too many times. The sketches in the front, I believe. First. Get that one. 
flat. And this, don't forget this ribbon cable. The ribbon cable on the left here connects two boards together. Put that back into place. The cover back on. Again, all the scrolls, the screws are the same except for two. There's two, they have a different thread when you look at them. For the plastic, the those two go right in these two places. Again, at the just the rubber plastic pieces on the on the corners. Get everything kind of in there loosely at first. These little bumpers just in the corners. These screws aren't all that tight. Just really just snug them up. And put it back in place. I'll go turn the power on and see if it works. Now the power's on. Let's try and turn the stove on, see how what happens here. So we've got all five burners going. Looks like it still works at least as well as it did. We'll find out if it uh, if our era 42 goes away, because that that is something that seemed to go comes on and off. Doesn't always it's not always on.